Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today I have in front of me a tier list of one of my favorite artists, probably of all time, one of hip hop's most versatile, influential, creative, overall just one of the best artists, in my opinion, to come out of the 2014 to 2017 time frame. By the title of this video, you already know that that artist is XXXTentacion, who I've been a fan of for a very long time, uh, ever since, I would say, 2014, before he released Question Mark, before he released Seventeen, before he released Revenge, Look at Me, before all the tracks that made him famous. I actually just happened to come across him one day on SoundCloud, and ever since, I had been following him closely as a fan, as a supporter, etc. As I always say when I mention him in a video, rest in peace. And today I'm going to be raking every single album, mixtape, compilation, LP, EP, uh, to ever come out of his discography. Some of these tapes came out before X was even on streaming services. Some of these tapes came out before he was even on SoundCloud. So if you consider yourself a pretty dedicated X fan, a pretty close following X fan, or at least an OG X fan, you most likely will know pretty much all these tapes, but if you've kind of been introduced to the streaming surface of X, you probably won't recognize a lot of the things that I will include in this list. Almost all true X fans know that the discography that X has on streaming services is vastly, vastly different than the discography he has on SoundCloud old YouTube projects, things like that. So today I will go through every single release that he has ever put out, commercially or non-commercially, and I will be ranking them in a tier list. Uh, I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of projects that rank very highly in this list and a lot that rank very low, judging by most of his posthumous stuff. But regardless of how low I rank anything, I do not hate any of the projects here. Uh, there's not been a single project by X that has come out where I had not enjoyed a single song on the album. So let's get straight into this. So first we have the Question Mark Deluxe. Uh, the Question Mark Deluxe was a huge, huge disappointment. One of the most disappointing deluxe albums from a very talented artist in a while. And I feel like that's not at the fault of the artist, that's more the fault of the people who put it together, his mom, any other producers, creative directors who were in charge of this. Again, there are a lot of very good individual songs on this album that will go very good on their own, but as an entire album listening experience, as, as an entire body of work, this is just borderline terrible. I, I don't hate it. There are a lot of good songs on it. But the way this was put together, like whoever decided to be in charge of putting this together, who, who whoever was in charge of this thing, put this deluxe together horribly. All of the demos, all of the acoustic versions, all of the instrumentals. It was really weird how they literally copied and pasted the Ghetto Christmas Carol EP, which I'll be ranking later. They literally copied and pasted that entire EP into the track list of this deluxe. Like, they, they just ran out of material to put in it. The voice memos are pretty pointless. The instrumentals are, are just incredibly boring to sit through. Because instrumentals on a trap record, on a pop record, aren't very enriching to the album experience at all. Like, I would understand if it was some sort of, like, monumentous, abstract album that had, like, really out-of-this-world, insanely creative instrumentals. But a pop trap record, a hip-hop record, just having all the instrumentals at the bottom, having to sit through this several hour long experience eventually got very boring. And again, that's not really at the fault of the artist. I feel like X himself would not want this project to exist if he was alive today. I feel like if X could come back for a day, if X could be alive for another day, he would come back and he would delete this fucking project along with a few others too. So yeah, that's probably where I'd put that one. Uh, but next we have the original question mark record, which I, I would probably put in the C tier. Again, packed with a lot of individual songs that are very, very good. Songs that I could sit through on repeat a bunch of times. A lot of very good songs. But there are also a lot of duds in between some of them. A lot of duds in the track list. As a whole album listening experience, it is a bit long. It does get a bit boring at times, sitting through the entire thing. Again, a lot of very good songs on here. D don't, don't get that crossed. But as an entire album, whole body of work listening experience. It's not bad by any means, but 
in comparison to some of his other things, it definitely doesn't stand out that much. It's definitely not X living up to his fullest potential. So then we got Bad Vibes Forever, uh, which I would probably have to put in the E tier, I would say. Uh, if this list didn't have an E tier, I'd probably put it in the F tier, but it's just it's just slightly above that 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 horrendous level that the question mark deluxe came out to be. Uh, this this was just awful. I I'm fully aware that this was basically just a, a very scummy cash grab uh, by his mother and other associated uh, people who were in charge of putting this together. There are so many songs in here that don't need to exist. There are so many songs where it's just X repeating some sort of vocal line or idea on the chorus, and then the featured artist is actually the one rapping. I feel like the producers, the creative directors, the executive producers who were in charge of putting this together had, like, fragments of song ideas that were left over by X, and they had to fill in all these gaps with production and features and a lot of copying and pasting, a lot of repetitiveness. There are a lot of other ways of handling posthumous records where you can really create a good body of work in a way that the artist, if they were alive, they would be happy with. A very good example is Mac Miller. A very good example is Juice World. maybe even Pop Smoke. But the treatment of X's art and the treatment of X's vocals on his posthumous records just makes me feel like this doesn't really need to exist. If you're not going to make something that is enriching, something that is really capturing the artist's original style, something that doesn't just feel like you did this purely for money, purely just to put something out so people will buy it, it's really, it really just, it's not, it's not good. It's not, it's not a good record. There are a few good singles. I like the song with Lil Wayne. I like some of the tracks that kind of embodied a bit of like a 17 style, uh, but all the dance hall tracks on here just didn't need to ever be created at all. <laughs> all the dance hall tracks just make me want to delete the album from my phone. And knowing how much talent X did have, it is a very sad and tragic thing that something like this came to be in a way that I know he wouldn't really be happy with. So then we got Skins, the first uh, posthumous record that ever came out by X. I would probably put this in the D tier has a lot more enjoyable songs, has a lot more uh, songs I can vibe with, a lot more bangers, a lot of other sad cuss as well. But again, as, a, as an album listening experience, as a whole body of work, it is just not there at all. I liked most of the songs that actually felt completed on this album, like the Train Food track. It's probably my favorite posthumous song to ever come from him at all because it really feels like something that he made. He actually sat down and came out with a final idea for a song and recorded the whole thing. It's a complete idea. It doesn't just feel like someone's copying and pasting a few lines in a chorus. Uh, Bad was okay. The Kanye feature was okay. Uh, there were a lot of weaker tracks in the track list. There were a lot of duds. Uh, but yeah, overall as an album listening experience, it's really not there. Really not there. Uh, again, a lot of good tracks, but not a good album. Uh, so then we emerge into the Members Only series with Members Only Volume 1. I'd have to put this in the A tier, honestly. Uh, this is this is honestly an A tier album. Uh, this this album is packed to the to the brim with literally nothing but Florida East Coast trap bangers. And, and I'm usually not one for like an e more East Coast Florida style, but I really like this. You got God with Ski Master Slump God. You got Fuck with Ski Mask the Slump God. You got the song Catch with those vocal samples in the background. I mean, overall, it's just a really good album. There's not really much to say about it I'm, other than like e every single track is either a banger or like every once in a while you get this kind of like more depressed, sad, slower song here and there. But overall, this is just packed with bangers all, all around. Uh, and then we have uh, Volume 2, uh, which I would probably put in the B tier. It is not as much of like an OG project as uh, Volume 1 was, but it definitely was a very great record. Again, a lot of bangers. Uh, there were, I love Suicide Pit. That was a great one. You see a, a few more members introduced on this one that have a few features here and there, a few verses on a couple tracks. I pretty much have the same things to say about it as I can say about Members Only Volume 1. It just it just isn't as authentic. It's definitely not bad or anything. Like, it's definitely a great record. But I just feel like there's something that Volume 1 has that Volume 2 doesn't. But yeah, that's basically my thoughts on that one. Then we got number 3, which is my personal uh, favorite of the series. I, I have to put this in the S tier. I, I have to put this one in the S tier. 
This took a lot of the influences and song vibes, ideas, themes from Members Only Volumes 1 and 2, but then it like amped them up, added a lot more members to the group, added some new song ideas that I've never really heard from him before, uh, before this point. Like this album has a pretty much perfect balance between all these trap bangers with, you know, Ski Mask, Rob Banks, Bass Santana, you know, all, all the members of the, of the Members Only group. And then there are also a few other tracks that are more lyrical, more depressed, more talk about like the struggles of the past. Uh, the intro is more melodic and slow and depressing and relatable. Uh, just on this record, we pretty much see X getting together with all of his friends, all of his musical collaborators that he's worked with uh, over the years, putting them in a group and then masterminding this, this perfect 10 out of 10 record. Probably one of my favorite compilations uh, from any artist and probably my favorite record from X, honestly. I loved Kid Trunks on here. Uh, Ichabod Veins even appeared on this album once. Kill Station even appeared. A classic. This is this is something that at least I will look on as a classic that I'll probably remember like like near into my later adulthood. But yeah, let's 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 move on. We got uh, Members Only Volume 4. Uh, this was actually released posthumously to uh, X is passing. I would probably put this in the C tier with question mark. Definitely not bad. I did enjoy a lot of the cuts here. Again, there were some duds tracks that didn't need to exist, but it really is nice to see uh, X's mom not being the creative influence behind a record because you can kind of see the difference. With Members Only Volume 4, you can see the members of his group taking a more creative control. People like Craig Zen, Rob Banks, Ski Mask, things like that are actually like taking more of a creative direction towards this project, and this is probably the best posthumous record that X has been featured on, period. I mean, you could really see the difference between Members Only Volume 4 and other records that have been posthumously released that were masterminded by other people. I love the song Empty uh, on this one. There were a lot of good songs here. There are a lot of bangers on here. There are a lot of uh, sadder, more deeper songs. Uh, I feel like X could have actually appeared on this more because there are some songs that don't even feature him at all. But overall, this is a pretty good one. This is probably my least favorite of the members only series, but it's by no means a, a bad record. It's probably just, it's probably just on the fence between being good and mediocre. So then we have Kids. Uh, there's not much to say about this one. I mean, it's pretty short. It's pretty short and sweet. There's not a whole lot to say about it. I pretty much enjoy all the tracks that are on it. A lot of bangers on here. A lot of really loud, distorted bangers. It's pretty short and sweet, only six tracks. I mean, like, there's not really a lot to say about it. It's just, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, it's not like the best thing ever. It's not something that blows my mind. Uh, but especially for a very early X project, it is pretty good because there were a lot of earlier uh, records that weren't as as impressive as this was. But this was definitely a good a good direction for him. I feel like this kind of started the direction that led him towards releasing things like Look at Me and Rip Roach, things like that. So then we got Mona Lisa. Uh, this was one of his first releases ever. I would probably put this in the D tier. I mean, I can't really blame him. It's pretty much his first record. It has a lot of his first songs on it. You can see what his original style kind of stemmed from. Not too impressive at all. Um, but there were a few tracks that I liked, a few that I didn't. Uh, it's obviously, honestly, it's a bit underwhelming at a lot of points. Like, I feel like he could have just taken a lot of the more enriching and fulfilling tracks on here, just released them as singles, and then set the other ones aside. Like, this album, again, I get it's one of his first, so, I mean, everyone starts somewhere. But this just doesn't feel like an album, it feels like the cutting board like the, like the kitchen floor of an album, but the quality and the production and the mixing is not really executed all that well. So then we have XXX Unmastered. This was released after the Mona Lisa project. I would probably put this in the C tier. Uh, definitely seeing X going in a good direction on this one. Not my favorite album of his of all time. It's not really bad per se. Uh, this one is a bit longer than Mona Lisa. Again, a lot of bangers on here, a lot of individual tracks that I did thoroughly enjoy. Uh, as an album listening experience, it isn't terrible by any means, uh, but it's definitely not like this huge, monumental, impressive thing. Uh, for one of his very first projects, it is pretty impressive. It is probably one of his best projects from his earlier days of making music, but yeah, that's probably where I'd put that one. So then we have Ice Hotel, in my opinion, is a classic. Very underrated, a lot of people don't really know about it. I love the beat choices on this album, love the production. You can tell there wasn't really 
a super high budget on this one because there isn't a lot of mixing. It's pretty much just rapping over beats where you just insert your vocals and that's about it. Like there's pretty much no mixing here. Or if there is any mixing, it's not done very well. Like like if the mixing was done professionally on this album, like maybe if this album was hypothetically redone, which I know won't happen, I feel like it would have been a lot better. Maybe even would have been like an S tier pick. Uh, but I, I really do love this project. Like the mixing is the only bad thing about it in my opinion. Love the lyrics, love the flows, love the beats. Uh, love a lot of the features he includes on here from a few underground artists probably my favorite project from that era of his discography. Uh, if you don't mind the bad mixing, uh, I definitely suggest this. So then we have It Wasn't Enough. This is more of an EP, but I would probably have to put this in the B tier. I love Snow. I love the uh, Kanye West song. I love my click like Kanye West. I uh, love a lot of the songs on here. Uh, this is probably the only X record I could ever say that I wish it was longer, or maybe I feel like it could have been longer, because I loved the vibe he was going for on this EP, but there was like only a few songs, so... I feel like if he elaborated on these vibes, these ideas, these how he kind of alternates between a more sad and depressing, heartfelt, reminiscent song structure to a more upbeat, trap banger song structure, I, I really like that. And how it was also kind of lo-fi at the same time. Uh, Snow is definitely a highlight on here, you got kind of like a humming, reverbed chorus at the end by Kill Station, and I love the, the lyrics and the, the delivery by X where he's just rapping from the heart, really. Um, so yeah, this is this is a really good one. This is probably my favorite, I, I don't want to say my favorite EP because I haven't been through all these yet, but it's one of my favorite EPs from him. So then we have Heartbreak Hotel. This is also uh, one of the more shorter projects from him. I'd probably put this in the B tier as well. Uh, definitely had a lot of very good tracks, but this is kind of the opposite of what I thought about um, It Wasn't Enough, where I feel like this should have been an EP rather than like more of a longer track list because I love the song Never, I love the song Skin, I love a lot of the tracks on here but there are also like a few duds in between that like don't really need to be there at all. I can't even say which one I would pick between It Wasn't Enough and Heartbreak Hotel because they're both so good and they both have their own issues that don't really prevent me from liking the album very much. Like listening to some of the tracks off of Heartbreak Hotel just feels like you're floating. So then we have Revenge. This was kind of the debut mixtape uh, slash album by him. There are a lot of classics on here. A lot of classics. You got Look At Me, you got Rip Roach, you got Young Brats, you got all the slower ones, King, Valentine, things like that. This album is perfectly lengthed to the point where you don't feel like you're not getting enough, but you also don't feel like you're sitting there bored the entire time. It balances bangers with a lot of slower, more depressing lyrical cuts. This is probably my favorite solo commercial album from him. I literally remember buying this the day it came out and ever since I've owned it and I haven't enjoyed it any less each time I come back to it. Some of the singles on this album also helped X get famous and it was really cool to actually like literally watch him become famous off of Look At Me, uh, Rip Roach, that kind of thing. So this is definitely a really cool album to me, holds a place in here. Uh, really good one. So then we have 17. This is the album that most people know X for. This took him from the fame that he got from Look At Me from the Revenge album, and it attracted a lot more attention to him uh, for things like Jocelyn Flores, the Revenge song, uh, and obviously not talking about the album. Uh, the Fuck Love song with Trippy Red. I feel like this is an album that attracted a lot more of a younger fan base towards him because this record features a lot uh, more sad, depressing, acoustic beats with some vocal samples in the background from people like Shiloh Dynasty, things like that. Some people may think this album is cliche, but I definitely do like it. I don't think it is like to this extremely high esteem that a lot of people are making it out to be, but I definitely think it's a good record. I could listen to this entire album quite a few times without getting bored. Uh, love the singing on here, the lo-fi aesthetic. Um, Trippy Red is the only feature on it and it's done perfectly. I love Trippy's verse on Fuck Love. Uh, pretty much enjoy the vast majority of the tracks here. There are a few that I enjoyed more or less than others, uh, but overall it's, it's a good record. It's a good record. It didn't blow my mind or anything, you know, didn't blow my head out of the sky, but definitely a good one. So finally we have the Ghetto Christmas Carol EP. 
I was kind of torn between putting this in the A tier or the B tier, but after some thinking, I think I'm going to put this in the B tier. Uh, loved a lot of the songs on here. Again, this shows him coming from uh, more of like a sad, depressed standpoint, but also featuring some bangers in the track list like Red Light, uh, the title track. I love how he incorporated a bit of metal into the track Indecision. Uh, I love the track Hate Will Never Win, where it kind of takes a political standpoint against Trump, uh, the right, racism, police brutality, things like that. Overall, this is a great EP, but I wouldn't necessarily hold it to the high level of, of esteem that I hold things like Revenge, Ice Hotel, uh, Volume 3, Volume 1, things like that. Definitely by no means were there any tracks on here that I disliked. So yeah, that is that is my tier list of, of the XXX Dentacion discography. We got Volume 3 in the S tier, we got Question Mark Deluxe in the F tier. I mean, if you just notice this pattern, Everything above the D tier is pretty much stuff that he released when he was alive, other than the volume four. And then down here, we literally have everything that is that is uh, creative directed by X's mom, uh, aside from Mona Lisa, of course. But I mean, overall, I've never hated an X album. Uh, there have been some that have been pretty bad, like the Question Mark Deluxe and Bad Vibes Forever. Um, but there has never been an album released by him where I haven't enjoyed any track. Like I, there are always some tracks on his albums that I do enjoy. But again, you know, I'm just r rating these as, you know, album listening experiences, like listening to a full body of work. And while most people will agree that he's not necessarily an album artist, uh, he has released a few albums in the past that I have thoroughly enjoyed. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you agree, disagree, let me know in the comments. Uh, I know some people love the posthumous records by X, so some people may uh, disagree with me on that. Some people may uh, blow my ass up in the comments but uh, overall yeah just let me know your thoughts in the comments like subscribe hit that notification bell because i uh, do uh, upload on here a lot and i will see everybody in the next stream or video thank you